The Samsung Galaxy A34 and 54 have just been announced. I've had some early hands on time and here's everything you need to know. What's up guys, Saf here on Super Saf TV. And we're gonna compare these side by side to see which one of these might be right for you. So first up, the design, we've got a refresh design and now it goes in line with the S series. Samsung has been doing this more and more with that triple ring design, which we initially saw on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now I quite like this design, especially with the vibrant colors that we have. Both are available in a lime, a violet, as well as a graphite. Although Samsung calls all of these colors awesome, every single one of them, awesome lime, awesome violet, awesome graphite. But we have a silver on the A34 and a white on the A54. Now you may notice that we've got differences in terms of the textures however and that is because we have a matte finish on the A34. The A54 has a glossy finish and that's because it has a glass back. The A34 has what Samsung called a glastic back which is plastic made to look like glass. So you're going to get the more premium material on the A54 but personally speaking I do prefer the matte finish on the A34. I wish that Samsung had also given a matte finish on the glass back of the A54, but I guess they really want to show that it is glass. But anyway, if you're going to be putting your devices in a case, then I guess it's not really going to matter. Now we do have polycarbonate frames, plastic frames on both of these, which is expected in the A-series. And both devices do have an IP67 water and dust resistant rating, which is nice. Now the devices weigh roughly about the same as each other, which is slightly higher than what we had on last year's devices. However, the A54 is slightly smaller overall in the dimensions compared to the A34. And that is because the A34 does have a slightly larger display. We've got a 6.6 inch display versus a 6.4 inch display. Now both devices have a full HD plus resolution. We've got Super AMOLED technology, which means colors are very vibrant and pop. And both devices also support up to a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So this is an improvement on the A34 because the A33 last year only had up to 90 Hertz. And both displays are also brighter compared to what we had last year. So the peak brightness is 1000 nits up from 800 nits on the A33 and the A53. So lots of similarities, but also some differences. So firstly, the design, the A34 does have that teardrop notch, which Samsung call Infinity U. I mean, personally speaking, this is quite an outdated design. The A54 has the much more modern, punch out infinity old design that we've seen on some premium devices as well. Also, I didn't see this mentioned anywhere, but when I was testing them out, I did notice that the A54 has an adaptive refresh rate, so it can switch between 60 and 120 Hertz. On the A34, I only saw the option of having standard or high refresh rate, so it seems that it doesn't have an adaptive refresh rate. And this would tell me that although the A54 on paper has the same display technology, it is slightly superior and should be more efficient. Now, both devices have an in-display fingerprint scanner. We also have Samsung's vision booster technology, which is gonna adapt the displays based on the environment. So nice displays on both, but clearly the A54 does have a superior display. Right, now let's talk about the cameras. So both devices have a triple rear-facing camera setup. Last year, we did have some depth cameras. I'm glad those are gone. So both devices have a five megapixel macro camera camera, which is pretty much the same as far as I can tell. And then we have ultra wide cameras. The A54 does, however, have a high resolution 12 megapixel ultra wide camera versus the eight megapixel ultra wide camera on the A34. And we do have some differences for the primary cameras. So with the A54, we have a brand new sensor. Now this is 50 megapixels, which is down from the 64 megapixels that we had on the A53. However, this is a larger sensor size, which is going to help with low light. On the A34, we have a 48 megapixel camera. The sensor size is not as large as the A54. The A54 also has better optical image stabilization from the primary camera, and it's also using all pixel focus, so it's gonna have more accurate and faster focus compared to the A34. The A54 also has a higher resolution selfie camera like we had last year, so it's 32 megapixels versus the 13 megapixels which we've got on the A34. Now, in my quick testing, the selfies seem to be pretty good on both devices, but one key new feature that we've got on the 34 and 54 is the integration of Snapchat filters 
in the main camera app. So you're not gonna have to go into Snapchat to take your selfies with all of these different filters. You're gonna be able to do it in the camera app. And it's the first time I've seen this feature in a camera app, which is really, really cool. Right now, what's powering these devices? Well, on the A34, we do have the MediaTek Dimensity 1080 chipset. That's a six nanometer chipset. On the A54, we have a better chipset. It is the Exynos 13AC, which is a five nanometer chipset. So for the A34, there's a 17% improvement in the CPU and around a 14% improvement on the GPU. On the A54, you have around a 20% improvement for CPU performance and around a 26% improvement for GPU performance. What does that mean? Well, if you're somebody who's gonna be gaming on your device a little bit more, you might lean towards the A54, although the A34 should give you pretty decent performance overall for your day-to-day. -day. Now, both devices are available with a base of 128 gigabytes and they go up to 200 and 56 gigabytes however the a54 does come with 8 gigabytes as a base so even if you get the 128 gigabyte version you're still going to get 8 gigabytes of ram the a34 starts with 6 gigabytes of ram as a base if you do want 8 gigabytes of ram you will have to go for the 256 gigabyte option now one great thing about both devices is that you can expand the storage they both have a micro sd card slot which supports up to a one terabyte micro SD card. Now for the batteries, both devices have a large 5,000 milliamp hour battery. This is the same as what we had last year. In terms of battery performance, both of these should be really good, but we have different chipsets and slightly different displays. So it'll be interesting to see which one of these lasts longer. However, I would expect similar battery life with both of these. And they both do have support for 25 watts of fast charging. Neither of these have wireless charging and the charger in most regions, I believe, is not gonna be included out of the box. There may be certain regions where it is included. Now for the speakers, both have stereo speakers. We've got one in the earpiece and one bottom firing with Dolby Atmos, which is nice to see. And in terms of other features, the A54 also has Wi-Fi 6 support, whereas we've got Wi-Fi 5 on the A34. So if you've got a compatible router, you'll be able to get faster speeds on the A54. Now for software, both of these do come with one UI 5.1 out of the box, which is based upon Android 13. And Samsung has been really good with updates and they are promising four years of OS updates and five years of security updates on both devices, which is amazing. Finally, pricing. So the A34 starts at 350 pounds for the base model. If you do want double the storage, then that is gonna be 50 pounds more. The A54 starts at 100 pounds more compared to the A34, so 450 pounds. Once again, for 50 pounds more, you will get double the storage. Now, Samsung, as always, does have some pre-order offers. The one that I am aware of is that you'll be able to get the Galaxy Buds 2 free if you pre-order the A34 or the A54. Now, the Galaxy Buds 2 are worth around about 100 pounds, so that is a pretty good deal and the devices will be releasing on the 25th of April. So what are my thoughts on which one of these do I think you should buy? Well, these are very nice devices for the price point, especially if you get those Galaxy Buds 2 free. If you were to ask me, personally speaking, I would spend the 100 pounds more to get that superior display on the A54, the higher performance with the chipset and the RAM, as well as, of course, the better primary camera. Now, if you don't wanna spend a penny above 350 pounds and you're happy with what the A34 is offering, then I still think it's a good option. But there is a lot of competition in this price range now. And if you do wanna get a Galaxy device, maybe a Galaxy S21, then you might be able to get it for around the price of the A34. 54. However, you're not going to get the software updates for as long as you're going to get on this new device. That's what I think anyway. What do you guys think? Drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. If you want to see some more Samsung Galaxy coverage, I've done lots of coverage of the Samsung Galaxy S devices. Those will be linked here and here. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do consider subscribing for more videos like this. And don't forget to smash that like button. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. And I'll see you next time.